Today we'll be making a custom drill accessory using the Robo 3D printer. This video is sponsored by Robo 3D. And in this video, I'll show you how I printed this custom tool storage to clip right onto your Ryobi battery so that it's convenient for you to use when you're using your drill. There are many times when I'm working on a project and I end up losing my driver and drill bits because I placed them on the floor. This 3D accessory is the perfect solution. Storing the driver and drill bits under the battery makes for easy access. And because of how the slots are arranged, the accessory is still able to sit flat on the surface with the drill attached to it. Now, I know not everyone has access to a 3D printer, so I'll show you how you can use free software to make and upload onto a website called Shapeways to print your models for you. I'll talk a little bit more about Shapeways at the end of this video, but first, let's get into the process of making this model. I started by just printing variations of the front latch of the model. This allowed me to make quick changes to the model in order for a better fit. This also saved a lot of time and plastic that could have been wasted on just test models. The majority of the battery is pretty simple in form, except for the front. The first model looks a little bit ridiculous, but it was just to get the sizing right. From this model, I knew that I did not want my overall form to be this thick. Now, there is improvement in the second model, but the radius was still a little bit off, and I wasn't too happy with the latching mechanism. Now, this model was pretty good. The only issue was that where the model bends, it's a little too thin. This final model is money. The fit and the aesthetics were great. Next, I figured out how wide and how long I needed my model to be. I'll explain a little later about how I transferred the bottom shape to the actual model. I took a picture of the bottom of the Ryobi battery, and then I imported that picture into Illustrator. I used a pen tool to carefully trace the bottom of the battery. I saved the shape as a SVG file so that I can import it into Fusion 360. I started modeling my form in Sculpt and then I extruded my model to the appropriate height. I gave my model a little bit of a taper by changing the number on the angle. Since the battery only tapers in the front and the back, I had to straighten out the sides. To untaper the sides, all I did was highlight the section, hit modify, and change it using the arrows. What's great about the sculpting mode is that you can manipulate smaller sections of your model. This gives you more control over a form that isn't so geometric. I gave the model a thickness, and then I extruded the front portion to create the latch. Under Modify, there is a Subdivide tool. I used this tool to divide one section into multiple sections. That way I could extrude part of it out to create the latch. I continued to do small modifications to the model to make sure it would fit snugly onto the battery. Once I was done sculpting the model, I hit finish form on the top right and it immediately switches to the model form. Now, because of the tiny modifications, the bottom is not completely flat. To fix this, I created a sketch on the bottom and cut away 0.1 inches to create a flat surface. I offset the lines on the bottom of the model and extruded up to create the bottom. I made sure the selection was on join and not cut. The entire purpose to creating this 3D model was to conveniently store driver and drill bits. I modeled slots on the bottom of the attachment for the drill bits to slide in. The spacing in between the slots took a couple times to get right. So just like the front, I printed these slots separately until I got them perfect. I then joined everything into one component and saved the STL in millimeters. The Robo 3D printers run off of G-code, so I used the Kira software to change the STL file into a G-code. Kira is great because on here you can change a lot of the settings that you wouldn't actually notice if you just saved it as an STL. I saved the file onto a USB drive and then loaded it onto Robo R2. I 
Under Files, I selected the proper G code and I let the print run. What's really incredible about these Robo 3D printers is that the prints straight out of the printer are really clean, so there is minimal cleanup or sanding that needs to be done. After 10 hours, the print was done. There was a lot of supports in this model, but thankfully, supports are supposed to come off, so it actually wasn't all that difficult. I used a metal scraper to help me pry off some of the difficult pieces. So here is a little demonstration of how the driver bits slide into the compartment. I am extremely happy with the fit, the space in between the slots have the perfect amount of give so that the driver bit is snug in between the slots. I was so happy with the model that I decided to create two different variations of it. This current one that you see will only hold driver bits. I designed another one to hold driver bits but also three commonly used drill bits. 1 8, 3 16 and 1 4 I will provide the settings that I use for the Robo 3D printer in the description below so you can give it a shot. If not, Shapeways can get the job done for you. We set up a shop on Shapeways to give you guys the option to get these custom design models for your drill. Now, I know that the prints on Shapeways aren't super affordable, but if we can get this video to a thousand shares, we can ask our friends at Ryobi to put this into production so that we can lower the price for you guys. While there was a lot of trial and error throughout this project, it was a great challenge. It was also a great opportunity for me to really master Fusion 360. Let me know in the comments below about your thoughts on this project and if you have any future suggestions for any 3D modeling projects. If you want to see what I'm working on next, feel free to follow me on Instagram. Check out our website for updates on this project. Check out some of our other videos and please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.